The Minnesota Golden Gophers have struck gold with their incoming big man recruit, Dennis Evans. Evans is the 27th ranked player in the country, according to 24-7 Sports, making him the Golden Gophers' highest ranked recruit since Royce White, who was ranked 26th in 2009. Evans turned heads this summer and has become the nation's premier rim protection prospect. And for good reason, he's seven feet tall with a 7'7 wingspan. For context, the only players who definitely have a longer wingspan than him in the league today are Rudy Gobert, Mo Bamba, and Boban. Evans is also one of the youngest players in the 2023 recruiting class. So young, in fact, that he will still be 18 years old on draft night, whereas most players selected will be between the ages of 19 for one and dones and 22 for seniors. This fact just makes his defensive acumen that much more impressive. And he's a lefty. But before we get started with today's video, I gotta ask you all to like, comment, and subscribe. It means the world to me, and it serves two purposes. One, to game the algorithm, and two, it gives me the motivation to continue making this kind of awesome content. That being said, Let's get into the video. During this current draft cycle, teams have been falling over themselves for the potential services of Victor Wimbanyama, who is one of the best defensive prospects of all time, and rightfully so. However, I'm here to tell you all that Dennis Evans is just as talented when it comes to interior defense. That being said, he stands out among the nation's top recruits on the defensive end, posting a DSI consistently above 95 across four events and 213 minutes in Cerebro's database. Dennis posted these gaudy numbers in events such as the FIBA U-17 World Cup, Under Armour's Elite 24, and Buffs Who Wants to Smoke, and the stage events that consistently bring some of the top prospects in the nation together for some of the premier grassroots scouting experiences out there, noting that to show he was playing high-level competition while maintaining high-level defensive impact. There are usually two kinds of elite rim protection prospects. You have your risk takers, think your Mitchell Robinsons and your Jaron Jacksons of the world, who have elite defensive impact but can get themselves into foul trouble, potentially limiting the staying power of that impact. But then you have your Chet Holmgrens and Dennis Evans of the world who can accumulate these gaudy rim protection numbers all while fouling at a low rate relative to their defensive responsibility due to their technical prowess feel, and patience on the defensive end. I wanted to take a look at Evans' stock to foul ratio in each of these events per 40 minutes. In the four events in the database, Evans had a 13.5 to 6.7 stock to foul ratio in event one, 10.2 to zero fouls in the 17U FIBA World Cup, 6.6 6 to 3.4, and 15 to 0.8 in both of the TB5 events respectively. What we can glean from this information is that Dennis makes sound defensive decisions and can stay on the floor over long minutes without sacrificing defensive impact. A quick side note about Dennis and his camp is that they have valued his development over the glitz and glam of the shoe circuits, something that has allowed Dennis to experiment offensively and leads to some pretty enticing flashes that we'll get to later. That kind of explains his decision to go to Minnesota as well, as his lack of shoe circuit exposure, making it that much more impressive that he made it on a loaded U-17 roster as one of the youngest players in the event. But back to the defense, Dennis puts a lid on the rim, and I don't mean just right at the rim, even floaters aren't safe with him lurking around the paint. In this clip, Dennis is facing top 100 recruit Gare Duol. Duol is going to catch the ball in the high post, and after getting to the paint with little resistance, he manages to get off a floater. A shot that is a safe bet to get off over most bigs, but instead it is swatted away by Dennis right into his teammates' hands. Evans likely isn't going to be a reliable switch big anytime soon. His calling card is and will be drop defense. Think Brooke Lopez, Rudy Gobert, or Joel Embiid. However, that's not to say he is an immobile interior threat. He flips his hips well and has explosive lateral movement for someone so new to their massive frame. Here the ball is being brought up the left wing and Dennis is a little below the free throw line looking at his man. The ball handler decides to explode baseline and I want you to pay attention to Evans' lower body. He recognizes the drive quickly and flips his hips where he then explodes with one long stride off his left leg to deter the drive. We get some two for one action on this play because the ball whips around the perimeter before a cutter gets hit. Dennis is there in the air. He lands and flips his hips again, slides and initiates a second jump before blocking the shot attempt on the way down with some impressive hand tracking. Man, his timing and instincts really shine through on plays like this. One issue you may run into with your prototypical drop bigs is them getting out to shooters due to their mobility, but that's no problem for Dennis. He's super long with that estimated nine foot seven and a half standing reach, 
that puts his hands above the height of the basket itself with even his tiniest of jumps. He has good agility and solid decision making, so it's no wonder why he's an awesome closeout guy for someone of his archetype. Dennis is running to the paint. I'll attribute him with deterring the drive as the handler loses the ball. We're gonna freeze and take note of where Dennis starts on this closeout. He's right in front of the rim while the handler begins his step back jumper. Then we see one long step, two long steps before he jumps to contest the jumper without fouling, forcing a miss. I want to highlight his movement one last time on this play where he gets posted up and his man goes into a face up. Notice the size difference here as the ball handler should be able to get by Dennis here on burst alone, but we see Dennis mirror well and explode laterally off that left leg, again beating his man to the spot, absorbing contact and forcing a kick out. So that's one action shut down by Dennis on this play. His teammate gets beat off the dribble, forcing Dennis to rotate and deter that rim attempt before he has to explode off his back foot to recover back to his man who has an easy catch and shoot jumper. Well, I should say it would have been easy if Dennis wasn't an alien. Like we mentioned, before, Evans isn't your usual jumpy young big who's trying to send everything to the Raptors like a prime Dwight Howard. He is patient beyond his years and stays down on up fakes, doesn't foul much like those guys, and when he does jump, they're small jumps because it really doesn't take much for him to get above the rim for blocks and allows for him to get off the floor again quicker if a second jump is required. This is where Dennis really showcases that legendary shot blocking ability. His man faces him up before getting him into a post up where he up fakes, getting Dennis in the air. But as I mentioned before, he chooses not to jump out the gym on these, so he lands quickly and can react to the next action, which is altering a shot. He loses the rebound before absorbing contact extremely well on the bump, stays vertical, and gets another block before getting extra disrespectful with a snatch block. That was like four or five jumps in a few seconds. It's super impressive how quickly Dennis can get off the ground. You're not even safe from getting your shot pinned in transition. He moves pretty well in a straight line, like you see here where he runs the floor to glass this layup attempt. Admittedly, the offense is a bunch of flashes right now, but man, do the flashes flash. Evans and his camp are deliberately putting him in a plethora of offensive play types. One possession, he's the roll man. Another, he's in the dunker spot. Another, he's spotting up from three. And the next, he's handling the ball a little, trying to create off the dribble. My point is, he's getting a ton of different reps, and they're not boxing him in to being a pure rim runner or a spacer. They're letting him figure out who he is offensively and letting him play through the mistakes and the growing pains of that process. I'm really interested to see how this develops his awareness over time. As I said, Evans's offensive repertoire is pretty broad strokes. You get a little bit of this, a little bit of that. There's not a strong role he fits into right now, and since that's the case, I want to highlight some of the intriguing flashes on offense. Going into my film watch on Dennis, I expected him to be a pure rim runner with little to no perimeter comfortability. So imagine my surprise when I see this boy running around screens for contested movement threes in real high stakes basketball games, and he cashes it. However, stuff like this and the step back jumpers are not commonplace in his offensive arsenal yet. I am most interested in his confidence slash comfortability taking outside jumpers and the requisite coordination at that size to even attempt stuff like that. That being said, he's not shy putting up jumpers. Sometimes he's a little too trigger happy, but not enough for it to be a big issue. This is a part of the modern game that we've seen the NBA develop extremely well in guys like Brooke Lopez, expanding their range to at least catch and shoot jumpers and most of these guys are not starting out with nearly the shooting baseline that Dennis is. While not being a consistent part of his game quite yet, the confidence, touch flashes, and volume leave me thinking it's projectable going forward, a dimension that will pay dividends for his offenses, allowing him to be both a pop and roll threat in time as a counter to his roll game. He's been experimenting with some post fades and has even pulled out some good looking flashes there. Look at this Dirk fade. He's gaining comfort on these back to the basket jumpers and it's getting scary. I mean, look at this turnaround jumper. Not only can Dennis stretch it out, but he can attack slower footed bigs off the dribble with those long strides. Dennis starts in the corner and beats his guy off the dribble with two huge steps before rocking the gym with an insane poster. Admittedly, the handle is pretty far away for Dennis, but plays like this leave me intrigued with his long-term ability as a closeout attacker and driver. Really take note of that elongated step to throw the defender off. This is a seven footer. The U17 experience was eye-opening for me as a Dennis Evans enthusiast. In AAU, he doesn't really have a high-end advantage creator or passer to really take advantage of his talents as a roller or dunker spot threat. He didn't see many minutes, only logging 35 in the entire U17 tournament, but you got to see the flashes when he connected with guys like Jeremy Fears. Here, Fears is bringing up the ball, Evans comes up to set a screen, his man is in drop, and Fears' man gets over the screen. As Fears gets downhill, Dennis is just lurking in the dunker spot for an easy two points. Take note of how little load time he needed to get above the rim. Right now, he's not an elite vertical athlete and will probably feast more off of cuts, sitting in the dunker spot, spawning up, and a few high post slash post touches sprinkled in at the next level. 
as his body develops, making him an adequate role man partner. The floor is super, super high here as a roller with his length, size, and mobility, but I think that's going to be more of an NBA thing than a one and done thing if his stock continues to trend in that direction. Evans is a transition threat because he runs very hard from end to end, his motor runs hot, and he's going to get easy points just by being able to outrun opposing big men and being willing to get dirty. Just to reiterate, the offense is mostly flash based, almost by design, but there's a solid baseline here as a stationary shooter for it to be a potential part of his game moving forward, and his tools give him a high floor as a roller and dunker spot threat. Evans being so young gives me a lot of hope for his frame bulking up and developing, whether that be in the college or the NBA. Players like Anthony Davis, Mo Bamba, and Kristaps Porzingis have come in with similar size, and they all filled out without giving up too much in the way of mobility. Increased strength and conditioning training, as well as just maturing into his body, should lead to some latent athletic ability being unlocked, which will only further amplify his ability as a play finisher and rim protector. Overall, I think Dennis Evans is a top five pick in 2024. Even if he does not declare for that draft class, he will be an elite drop big in college and the NBA level. And I really appreciate he and his family's dedication to his development, and I think it bodes well for him long term. It's all about getting stronger without limiting that ability for me on defense and offensively I wish for him to continue to explore his game. Hopefully the shot develops properly and he gets more reps as a roller slash dunker spot threat with better guard play at the NCAA level. I really appreciate you guys for giving me your time. I know these videos can run a little long, so thank you. I'll see you guys in my next video which will be about the 2023 high school guard class. Thank you guys. Have a nice day.